Alright guys, Hatch Comic again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. The CDL finally came out and said what the season is going to look like for the upcoming year, revealing the dates and the event cities of the locations. There have been some changes from what we thought was going to happen over the last couple of weeks. Changes in event venues that are going to mean a rather big deal for the upcoming season indeed. Some things still yet unconfirmed, but the minor tournament schedule, which is being introduced for the first time here to the CDL, has caused quite some controversy. Certainly Scump says, sure, might be a good idea, but the way they're implementing it isn't quite what he would like to see compared to what happened with similar tournaments back in the pre-CDL days. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. This, by the way, is a Ben J. Nassim montage masterclass. Here he is absolutely cooking. I mean, great to see Ben J. It's mates. It might well be Ben J's year. Look, here's Zuma trying to get a kill on Ben J. Absolutely no way he could do it. So, Thought there were some great moments in there. Formal is, um, yeah, you shake <laughs> Look at that. The body shots come through. Zuma gets absolutely farmed. But let's talk about what was confirmed yesterday, because quite a lot. Starting here with the team packs coming, I think, later in Season 1. These are your 12 team packs for the CDL teams. Now, some of these go kind of hard. Some of these don't so much, to be honest. I liked the Ravens jersey last year. Not such a big fan of this one. I think Boston have kind of cooked, to be honest. Fair play. Their team was terrible last year, but I actually kind of like what they've got going on here. Okay, it's a little bit chaotic, but I like the face part of it. The other ones are all right. I still like this Falcons logo. I still think it goes super hard. The Ultra one's kind of good. I like Optics one. I like Phases one. Actually looks pretty okay to me. But um, look, we also have the elephant in the room here, the Los Angeles Grillers. What's going on there? I thought we'd said goodbye to those guys. They've not tweeted anything or done anything since the World Championship, which somehow they qualified to actually attend. But of course, they never even turned up to the World Cup. They were invited. They said no. Their players went to other teams and they were organization no longer exists. So I'm just a bit confused why it's taking so long to confirm the Gentlemates because Gataga's organization, Gentlemates, they're coming in. Everyone has said it. No one said to the contrary. The CDL haven't yet officially confirmed it. So um, gorillas have their own. I mean, to be honest, anyone could have slapped this together. It's literally two colors and the logo. So um, it's not like that gorillas have cooked up some sort of masterpiece here that shows that they're sticking around. You know, the league might have done this themselves just to show that they have something in the works for the 12th team. But that 12th team we don't think is going to exist. Every player has talked about it, certainly Scrappy and Hydra. They were very obvious in their analysis that, yeah, Gentlemates were talking to us. They gave us a good offer, but Thieves matched and surpassed the offer because they were you know, an organization with history in Call of Duty. They could bring the guys to Dallas. They had Ghosty as well, which was a plus in addition to what their roster could have been. And they went to, you know, Thieves over Gentlemates. But everyone has mentioned Gentlemates. They were there at the World Cup. They had a team for the World Cup. But um, yet, for some reason, they've not yet confirmed where they're going to be. Now, I do wonder if any of this is to do with what city they're going to be in. And, well, we'll discuss more on that in a second. Because interestingly enough, the one event that hasn't yet been confirmed firm so far is the events the gentlemates were potentially attached to. They think I think they're going to do some sort of reveal for basically a big like annual update for the organization in December sometime. So we may have to wait even further until we get any announcement on this, but it's just super rare that Daniel Sai in the video that we're going to look at in a couple of seconds says, hey, we have three new teams this season. Well, it's like we actually have four new teams this season in some capacity. Rocker G2, they are proper like partners for the start of the new season. So that's kind of one of them. The Falcons have become a thing, as have, of course, Cloud9 New York. But like we have another team coming along, but no one wants to say anything about it. Now, Heretics, they, of course, came along last year and they had a full Spanish team. Rincor has been, in my opinion, a very solid player in challenges over the last couple of years. This time he finally got his opportunity with Miami, but he started the season on the bench, or at least he started the year on the bench since game release. But no, they have decided that they will bring Rencor into their scrim. So Vickel has been subbed up, Rencor is in for now, which to be honest, that was the initial rumor that the roster was going to be Real, Lucky, Metals, and Rencor. No Vickel. But um, Vickel did scrim with the team. Now he's gone for maybe ever, maybe for a few days. I think the likelihood is that they're going to run some rotational trials. Vickel will be back, others will be back. But 
I would be surprised if they come to the conclusion that Renko will be their bench player. I think he's too good for that. And um, I was honestly surprised they didn't get Renko and Super, to be honest, and try and form uh, at least a Spanish team of the best four players in Spain, you could argue. So, um, look, we'll see how this works. But Renko was scrum with Miami. We'll see some evidence of that in a video later on today. But the CDLC, the wait is over. Welcome to the new season here in 2025. So Daniel's back at it again with another community update. And um, of course, they're talking about the season, last season, all this type of stuff. They do drop this as well, a calendar of when the league is going to run from December until June. And look, Daniel makes it very clear that everyone knows here in COD all we really want is more action, more events, more just anything competitive. Like, please, just try and give us, um, you know, as much competitive Call of Duty as you can muster. Obviously, EWC is going across July and August. I like how they make out that EWC is like the entirety of July and August. The reality is it's one weekend's in one of those two months. So um, it's not like it's a mega season. But look, the game has launched. We've got some great tournaments happening now. The season's about to get underway shortly as well. And they confirm exactly what that's going to be looking like. So he says, oh, Rocker are here now full-time with G2. Cloud9 are here with New York. Falcons are here. But um, no mention of Gentlemates. So I imagine they're just going to confirm it. They must be working on something. It's just because Gorillas were in LA... I don't think that Gentlemates want to be in LA. Maybe there's something else they can work out there, but um, I imagine they want to move into another city. So Miles comes on, they talk a bit about the events, where things are going to be, what the plans are going to be, and let's get right into that right about now. It was also confirmed, by the way, by the Esports World Cup themselves that COD is coming back for Black Ops 6. The timing is interesting. It was confirmed as well, though, by the league that the league is not going to overlap with EWC. Champs will happen, then the World Cup will happen, and as it was this year. As I said, I think in my ideal world, it's major, the final major. Ideally, in that mind, it would be like major six or something as the final major of the year, but it's going to be major four. Then the World Cup, then champs. That's how I would kind of like to do it. So at least the final event of the year is the biggest one in terms of like prestige for the entire season. But the World Cup will increase in its prestige as the years go on and the more years they do this. And I'm sure the players aren't going to complain about getting back out there because it was a phenomenal time. But let's talk about where these events are actually going to be because Ronnie then says shortly before the announcement that there's been some rumors that actually the event might be a week earlier than planned, which I guess is good. I mean, you know, one extra week sooner. It's still going to be end of January, which isn't ideal, but um, it's not going to be already substantially into February. And that is what they officially confirmed yesterday. These are the events of the upcoming season. So we have four plus the World Championship plus the Esports World Cup. We do have, in addition to these six events, I guess six lands, we have two minors that are happening online. Now, I'm hoping hoping, to be honest, that they, after hopefully these go well, I'd love to see them introduce them as well to the major three and major four cycles. I imagine that they're trying to condense them a little bit, but um, I like the idea of the minor tournament. It might not be great, but it's more action. Like, I would be in favor of running minor tournaments every single weekend over online qualifiers and using the results of those tournaments to seed for the major. That's not what the CDL are going to do yet. I kind of hope that they do at some point in the future, but this is the plan. The first event, by the way, worthy of note, is actually in Madrid. Now, we rumored for some time this is going to be in Barcelona. That was the big leak coming out of everything. And um, unfortunately, I think some people have already booked tickets. Now, Barcelona's a great city, so feel free to go and attend. Go, come to Madrid for this weekend and then come to to Barcelona the next weekend where the tickets were originally said to be. I mean, look, the CDL never confirmed it and I was always going to wait until they confirmed it to like, obviously get everything sorted. But um, it was the rumour until very, very recently that this was going to be a Barcelona event and things have changed dramatically it seems over the last few days. The I guess venue they were targeting in Barcelona no longer available or something, so they're going to do a week earlier in Madrid instead. This is going to be an ultra tournament and also they confirmed that Champs is going to be in Toronto. So Toronto running two events this year, one in Madrid, which is mega. They've got a big Spanish contingent of their overall organization and then one in Toronto itself. Major two in Dallas, March 20th to the 23rd. So quite a way, to be honest, after 
the first major and then everything kind of gets packed in a little bit more as they tend to do in the season. We've got Fort Lauderdale. So they called it the Miami event last year, but everyone knew that it wasn't really in Miami and that kind of put people off. So maybe this year they said, okay, we'll be a little bit more honest with our kind of, let's say, advertising events. And it's going to be a Fort Lauderdale event. Major four, though, we think is going to be in Chicago. The only reason I imagine they haven't confirmed it yet is I guess they're looking for details, but also there is a rumor that Jim Gentlemates are going to relocate their organization from Los Angeles after buying the Gorillas to Chicago and take that spot over again. And that might be why it's not been confirmed, because if it is a Gentlemates event, basically, then, you know, they can't say, oh, it's Chicago yet if there's a team going to be there, because otherwise, what would they say? Oh, Chicago event hosted by the Cod League. They've got to say hosted by someone on this graphic. So that is the interesting situation. Now, probably the best change we're seeing here is the following. The introduction of minor tournaments. Now, we talked about for years running 2Ks and 5Ks again. Back in the day, the season would be major LAN event or minor LAN event as well by many tournament organizers. We're talking Advanced Warfare 24. 14, 2015, times like that. And every weekend's MLG, so effectively the kind of official league, but not really, they would run these weekend's tournaments. Anyone could enter them and all the pros would end up in the final few rounds and they'd be the one taking home the cash. But really it was just great practice. So the miner is trying to replicate that. They are going to take the 12 teams based on the CDL standings as it stands. They will seed them into a 12 team bracket and that is going to be a single elimination bracket. So look, it's not ideal deal, but um, it is nonetheless a competition. Would I prefer to watch this over a three-day weekend than three days of qualifiers? Absolutely. Like, no doubt in my mind that um, this is going to be a better, more exciting, competitive product. Now, the way that this works is after the end of the minor tournament, the winner gets 20k and 30 CDL points. Second gets 20, third gets 10, fourth gets 10. So then, of course, there's so many storylines. Okay, can the team that won the minor replicate that on LAN? Are they just online? Are they single elimination merchants? But they get some nice CDL points towards their overall kind of fund at the end of the season. I don't believe, though, this kind of goes to the major seeding. So the major seeding is set by the standings in that regular stage of qualifiers. So, um, look, I think this is pretty exciting. It's definitely better, in my opinion, to have more competitive action than less. But of course, there have been some thoughts to the effect of, okay, could they make this potentially even better? So Skump was talking about it, and I wanted to share his point of view, because as he says, they're trying to bring back these 2Ks and 5Ks, that kind of feel, which I think is definitely a positive. Everyone who watches, you know, esports, I think, recognizes that the regular season matches just don't hit anywhere near the same as in terms of like any sort of tournament play where there's a champion at the end of the weekend. So Scum says, yeah, good, but um, it doesn't maybe quite have the same feel as the 2Ks, 5Ks from back in the day that he would potentially like to replicate. Well, basically, they just announced it. There's going to be minors this year. I don't know. I don't really know if I love the minors, though. It feels like they're trying to go back to like that kind of 2K, 5K-esque vibe with the minors, right? But it's single elimination, and I'm assuming that all of these teams aren't going to be streaming their own individual POVs and not allowing the players to obviously push their, you know, their POVs and stuff like that. Because I feel like that's what was a big part of 2Ks and 5Ks. You got to watch kind of the journey unfold and you got you got to watch the tournament unfold right between or right right before your eyes. And you, you kind of got to see the camaraderie and, and all of that shit, right? So I don't hate the minor, you know, system. I Because, I mean, more Call of Duty at the end of the day is just always going to be a good thing for everybody, right? But I would just like to see it done a l just a little bit differently, just a little tiny bit differently, which I know they're probably not going to do, the but... from that minor tournament leads straight into... So I think Skump definitely has a point, right? Things would go crazy back then when the teams would stream their own POVs. It's doubtful that that will be happening here. This is going to be an official CDL product. It will be broadcast and casted by the CDL, and that's how it's going to be run. So it's not going to quite have the same feel, but it is nonetheless going to be a tournament style situation just before the major tournament and that's definitely better than running another weekend of qualifiers in my opinion these by the way are the qualifiers to kick off the official season the first game a banger gorillas minnesota put your hands together and <laughs> say so, i mean look, this is gonna be chicago gentlemates possibly against the minnesota rocker 
you know, fine, great. Then Optic Play, so, you know, that's obviously the opening day, and then, of course, it's Vegas versus Carolina. Actually, no, four games on the opening day, finishing with FaZe Toronto, so that's kind of a banger as well. So, yeah, those are your first day qualifiers. We can see a lot of it right now. This is actually Optic's full season plan. So they play Boston, Cloud9, Surge, and Gorillas over the first couple of weeks in December. Then they play the minor at the start of January, so actually, yeah, the plan is going to be minor, and then they play more qualifiers. So the minor happens, like, basically right at the start of Jan, then there's a couple more qualifiers, then the major at the end of January, pretty much, and then it runs again. So, for example, yeah, major two, it's the same cycle. They play a few qualifier games, phase, thieves, etc. They play the minor, they play a few more qualifiers, and then they play major two. Very much intro to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.